But like thinking about this, it's like our environment is so toxic that, and when I say toxic, I'm talking about the things like the the the, the energy, the attitudes, um, like the the distractions, the inability mm-hmm. to really focus. Uh, it's so toxic. Like, for in your opinion, how do you see that impacting the 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 diets of people, the nutrition? Yeah, so I think the poorer your diet is, the poorer the energy that the food is putting in your body, converting into energy, the poorer that is, the more you're going to be exposed to toxicity from our environment. What's up? Yeah. What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of More Than Black or White. This is your boy Paul and your boy Brian. Brian, want to say some words to the, to the people, man? Just blessed to be here with everyone. Uh, hopefully, uh, can, Paul and I will drop some knowledge bombs on you guys tonight, and you can take that with you and uh, apply it to your lifestyle so you can be healthier, happier, and uh, you know, just go out there and crushing it. Hopefully, she, you oh, know, we, you're gonna you will, man. Gyms, you right? will, man. <laughs> hey, so listen, everybody. If, um, this is the first time you're listening to us, man. Listen, well, thank you, thank you for t- thank you for giving us a go. And if you this is the this is the time you're coming back to listen to us, like bless up and welcome back. We were we were talking about like it was a couple of weeks ago, actually almost a month ago now, Brian. We were talking about a lot of topics and the intention of this channel and and, and the podcast. And like what we really wanted to get done. And one of the things that we wanted to really dive into, and I'm happy that we are diving into, is about nutrition and a lot of these fads and myths that are out there. So one of the episodes mm-hmm. when we were going through and putting this putting this out, we came up with debunking myths. And it all is in alignment because the last episode we had was like intro to health and wellness. So we talked about the holistic versus allopathic. So um, Brian, uh, let me ask you, man, it's a check-in. What can you remember, mm-hmm. especially because you've been in the business, you've been in the health and wellness for like 25 years, 20, like over 20 years, right? 25 years, yeah. Damn. 25 years now. You're a vet, bro. You're a vet. Yeah. I think I wasted the first 10 years of my life. But after that, I got, I, I woke up and I started educating myself a lot more. So you really heavily snack. educating the last like 15 years. You got a fitness so. come to Jesus moment? <laughs> <laughs> I fitness come to Jesus moment. That was that was a, that was an epiphany in my life. And a uh, little short short story on that. I was in the fitness industry for about about eight nine years at this point, and I'm working at a gym. And one of the trainers there, he's like, "Hey, would you want to go to a seminar with me up in Boston? It's like a perform better seminar." And I was like, "Ah, I was like, I don't know. It's like you know, I've, I've been doing this for like eight nine years, man. Like I know everything there is to know. So like right. I don't know what else I can possibly learn." So that's, that was like my mindset, right? So um, I went up there with him. I listened to four uh, presenters. By the end of the uh, two days, I was like, dude, I've hurt more people than I've actually helped. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it, I was just so blown away with the knowledge and how, how people like uh, real trainers are supposed to help other people. And uh, I went up to the presenters and I was like, hey, listen, like, I want to get on your level, man. I don't care how long it takes. What 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 piece of advice can you give me? And it's funny, like all of them are like, whatever you do, do not go to school for this. Find the best people in the world at what they do, study under them. But they, those people have proven results and then bring it back to the public. Mm. School is a waste of time. Like people like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, it depends on everyone, but like, you know, having an exercise degree, uh, degree in uh for exercise science is it's only going to take you so far in my opinion so that's what i did i went out there uh, i studied under some of the best coaches in the world in my opinion um i always ask them hey who's better than you what's next well you know what three books have you read that is your favorite i read those books find those authors if i like what they had to say i would go out and i would study under them and i would just get all this knowledge and i'd bring it back and I would try to share with as many people as I possibly could so I can just kind of sp- spread the word. Mm-hmm. And that's what kind of, that's what kind of took me. That's what kind of uh, took off for me. You know, wow, that's bro. my story, man. 
You know, it's so interesting, man. Like as you were as you were talking about that, that part that got me is when they said, "Don't go to school for this." And yeah, um, that's freaking. It's interesting because I was, th I was when you said it, I was like, "Oh man, that's deep." And especially when they followed it up with saying, "Well, go to the best people and learn from them, and then yeah. take it back." And it's interesting, right? Because like as we start to dive into these myths, Brian. I'm looking at like people that came up with these concepts, these things that we're about to go into today. At some point, they probably did a test and thought these were good, right? And maybe for some people, mm -hmm. it may be good, right? Yeah. So I want to put that as a disclaimer as, as we're about to go into this content and dive into these myths. And Brian, you know, when we were going mm -hmm. and as well, Brian, I want to probably, if you could, if you could talk to the audience more about what you were sharing with me yesterday, yesterday about this concept of this book about like a metabolic testing diet, like what is that? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So um, I've read like you know you see my bookshelf behind me. Um, I just put that up there today. I just want to if I, I felt like if I had a bookshelf behind me, it would make me look a lot smarter okay. than I actually am. So I, I'm there <laughs> get for more it. books, man. Get more books. <laughs> no, but I've been collecting books throughout the other years, and I have like a bunch of bookshelves. So, um, I think I got like three of those. I've read probably about like books. That's why I might be looking. Like, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's missing a couple books, Paul. You have any idea where they went? <laughs> but I've been probably read about forty or fifty books in my in uh, nutrition books in my life, and uh, I like them all. You know, I like them all because I think even if like a book is like you know, I've read books from like the watermelon diet, and I'm like, you know, it's it's obviously crap, but you learn a little science from each one of them, right? So. I, you take everything, you know, and you just kind of mold it together and, and you kind of figure out what works best for most people. So when I was uh, studying under uh, Paul Check, he his favorite book, and to me, it makes the most sense is something called your metabolic typing diet. What I like about it, it's based on pure science, not only pure science, but it's based on your body's DNA. So your body's DNA is exactly how it was, say, 40,000 years ago, maybe like a slight change. So his whole concept is he's like, you should be eating just like your ancestors used to eat. So I was giving you the example. So uh, Paul and I, we have a buddy, uh, his name is Anderson, and he works with us uh, at the club. And Anderson's from Brazil. So me, uh, he lives right on the equator. His ancestors grew up right on the equator. So meats tend to migrate north and south of the equator. There's more vegetation for him to eat. So his mm -hmm. genetic response to food is better when he does mostly carbohydrates he doesn't need a lot of fat or he doesn't need a lot of meat for him yeah my genetic makeup i'm more um irish german grew up in the northern european countries where it's more more it's colder out there so my body type i'll do better on fat and protein not a lot of like fruits and berries and stuff like that like if i eat like a lot of fruit i get bloated very quickly um, if I eat like a potato, I'll lean up, you know, there's a lot of yeah. factors that kind of play with it in there. So one of the so, things so is like, we were talking, so one, ahead, one of the things is, is, so what I'm hearing you say is basically that the eating habits in the, in the, so the body adapted to the environment because there was more vegetation mm, yes. in, 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 yeah. in areas where Anderson grew up the body got used to living off of that type of environment. So that's what it's almost like that, that genetic, that DNA kept traveling through mm -hmm. that, that region and same for yours. Yeah. That's yeah. So like, say like, you know, everyone's like, Oh, blueberries, antioxidants. But if you start feeding an Eskimo blueberries, they're going to start coming down with metabolic diseases. Where yeah. the hell are you going to grow a blueberry? Where do you see blueberry trees out in the Yukon Peninsula? You know, you don't, they live off like whale blubber, 90% of their diets, fat and fat oil and, and protein, you know, you're, you're not going to, they don't eat strawberries, you know? So that's what I, you know, every, but that's, that's the difference between like an allopathic approach and a holistic right. approach. Allopathic, right. you know, you would be like, yeah, hey, you line up a hundred people, all different nationalities from people from the Yukon Peninsula to people from like, you know, African tribes, to people in Northern Europe, you know, and you give them all the same diet. Yeah. A third will go better, a third will get worse, and a third will stay the same, you know? So you got to kind of keep playing around. 
but the whole new, the holistic aspect of the metabolic type and diet is you can tell pretty much right away if you're putting, if you're fueling your body with the right types of nutrients. So to some called like short-term responses. So after about 20 minutes to about an hour, your body will go through these responses. So for example, if you're feeling like lethargic, moody, depressed, those are all occasions that you put too much fat and protein in your diet for that meal. So maybe next time you, when you eat that meal, you add a little more carbohydrates in there. You take a little more fat on, uh, fat out, and then you see how you feel. But keep track of how you feel. You should be going every three to four hours being like, boom, I feel amazing. If that's not the case, something's wrong with your macro. Something's wrong with your fuel. Now, if you're wired but tired, jittery, a little bit of ADD, um, you're not satisfied, meaning you, you can still keep eating. Those are all indications that you didn't put too many, you put uh, too much carbohydrates in your diet. And you just burn through those really quick, right? Your blood sugar levels rise and all of a sudden you're crashing. So maybe next meal, you take out some carbohydrates out of it, add a little more fat protein to keep fine tuning it. So that's how to get a basic uh, meal plan set up for you after a couple of days of doing that. So in the beginning, like, yeah, I want to, uh, I, I want to, I want to make sure you're eating cleaner, but I also want to make sure how are you feeling after these meals? Like what's your mood like? Your body's always telling you, you have to be, and you have to really be in tune with yourself. Like we, we talked about the first episode, like three-legged stool, nutrition, uh, uh, exercise, and the mental, spiritual aspect, emotional aspect. That's the other part. So you need to be in tune with yourself. And this teaches you how to be in tune with your body. Damn. So that's basically like the metabolic type and diet in, in, in a nutshell. So this is, you know, and I'll let you know if you're a protein, you're a uh, protein type, you're a carb type, or you're kind of a mixed in between different things. And it also depends on your lifestyle. If you work out six, seven days a week, like you and I, you know, you're going to, we're going to need more protein. If we're a couch potato and we sit down a lot and we just like, don't do too much, our bodies will tend to more go towards a carbohydrate type. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep kind of like testing yourself and kind of figuring it out. And this is a great way because like all nutrients, they don't work to, they would, they work differently in everyone's body. Right. Like for you, calcium, it's going to work different in your body than it's going to work different in my body. Phosphorus can work different in your body. It's going to work different in my body. So we need to kind of figure all this out. It's wild, man, because like, what are the steps to figuring this out? Because I'm hearing what you're saying. Like, yo, listen, this, yes, tune into the body. And that in itself is a journey, right? Because, and I understand as, as the more, as I'm hearing you speak, I'm thinking about how easy it is to follow a myth or follow a fad rather than take the time and the opportunity to really settle into like, what are my short-term responses to like, say, for example, eating yeah. some kumquats or like, you know, if I had yeah. some Brussels sprouts or like, you know, if I had some pork, like what are the things that are going to help me understand? Like, you know what? That, that that fails to agree with my body, man. So that means I got to change something up. So this is, so, yeah. you know, th this is the thing that's really, that's fascinating. And, and, I, and it comes back to something that we've talked about in a, po in, in a podcast on uh, the Healed by Man Chronicles, where it was about how people are lazy, right? And it's And it's really failing to tap into shit man like well what what am i feeling like what am i sensing like what are these things like well hey man where is my family from right what are the types of foods that they eat like what and also it's and, and you know i want to stick on the food and the mint and the diet miss and yeah. and and to to do a quick offshoot like this is where it comes in about how we process food like the different elements like you said the body's going to adapt to the element so what kind of element physically are we putting around it? What kind of element emotionally? What kind of element spiritually? That was a preview. Podcast on that mm -hmm. coming soon. Anyway, back to the nutrition <laughs> diet, man. Let's, yeah. you know, bro, let's <laughs> dive into some of these facts because yeah. I can tell already my mind, I want to ask you so many damn questions, bro. This is part due. Why is that, Paul? Well, in the part before you heard this second part, you heard me say, you heard me say, I got a lot of questions. 
And I'm like, we'll connect it another time. So this is the other time. So Brian and I are going to continue on with this conversation specifically about metabolic typing diets, how our body, like what us consuming, what's meant for our bodies. Brian, would you say that's, would you say that's close to accurate? Or would you? Yeah, everyone's body is different on the outside, just like it is on the inside. So, you know, our, our, our physiology on the inside, just, it's almost like a, like a fingerprint on the outside. Everyone's yeah. unique in their own way. So everyone reacts differently to different types of foods. What might be a good food for somebody might be a harmful food for another person. So everyone's medicine is not, or everyone's food is actually not their medicine. It could be detrimental to their health. So this is the kind of way, how do you figure out like, Hey, what am I eating? And is it causing me to feel or not optimally feeling better? Is it, why do I still have, you know, all this arthritis? Why do I have all this pain in my body? Medicine, your food is supposed to be your medicine. It's supposed to heal you. Why isn't it? Hey, maybe we need to get into metabolic typing, kind of figure out maybe the foods that you're putting in your body are causing this. And this is where we are at part two. Yeah. And, th and, th and this is why this is so important because Brian, I know I'm, I'm sure you've seen this a, a lot where people will do some sort of fad diet or whatever is hot out there. And, and then all of a sudden they're sick, right? Or mm -hmm. they'll lose, they'll have temporary, um, they'll have temporary quote unquote positive results. Then maybe like a week or two or a month later, it's like they, they, they ballooned up even to, to even more than they started off with. And this is, this sure. is something interesting because when we take in these, these, these ingredients, um, and especially, you know, we have another video about, about the myths of dieting, where we talked about red meat. So go listen to that. The, 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 the thumbnail will be up here somewhere. Um, yeah. when, we, <laughs> when we were talking about this, uh, I think we, we, we were talking about like how, um, with red meat, like what's, uh, you, we talked about with red meat, like, you know, it's like what they're feeding the cows that's actually having an impact yeah. on us, right? Yeah, and, what, what's yeah, how they're raising the cows. It's how they're raising the cows. They raise it. They don't worry about how many cows they are. They want to know how much the cow how weighs. So they try to do it, anything they possibly can to fatten up the cow. The right. fatter the cow, the more money they can make off it. So they need to, they need to inject, you know, ant antibiotics, soy, um, sewage, sawdust, cement dust, anything to kind of fatten it up. And that's what we're putting in our body. So it's not the red meat, so to speak, you know, no one, no one had a, uh, you know, high cholesterol that was, uh, you know, two, 300 years ago. It's what we're putting in our food now. So this goes mm -hmm. into this. Is, I'm glad you brought this up because this goes into something you mentioned that is in my mind site, um, related to the metabolic typing diet am i saying it is it that is that the right title metabolic, yeah, typing. metabolic typing yeah um what we consume that's beneficial to us is based on our environment mm -hmm. like what our experience or like what our region is right so yeah it's interesting because like even thinking about it just an environment in itself you know we consume based on our environment so the thing that I really want to tap into here, and I want to really bring this to people, and like when you when you're watching this and listening, like any question that you have, like put it into the comments so we can come back and come and, and maybe do another video on this. But like thinking about this, it's like our environment is so toxic that, and when I say toxic, I'm talking about the things like the 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 energy, the attitudes, um, like the the distractions the inability mm -hmm. to really focus uh it's so toxic like for in your opinion how do you see that impacting the 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 diets of people the nutrition tactics of people man yeah so i think the poorer your diet is the poorer the energy that the food is putting in your body converting into energy the poorer that is mm -hmm. the more you're going to be exposed to toxicity from our environment you know, if you, the healthier you eat, the right fuel that you put in your body, combined with the good thoughts, positive thinking, it's almost like a force field over your body. Mm -hmm. So it, it all starts with your it all starts with your food. And kind of piggyback on what you were saying last a uh, couple of minutes ago is like you know people do these fad diets and all of a sudden they blow up or are having these issues. Paul, you and I we've been doing this for a long time. We're coaching clients. We've had clients that 
sit in front of us, be like, I eat organic. I get plenty of sleep. I don't really have too much stress going on in my life. I work out. I don't, I don't, I still feel like crap. Why is that? Right. You know? So that this is where I go, listen, you're putting the wrong fuel in your body. And I do their metabolic typing. They're eating like a carb type when they should be eating like a protein type. You know, they should be eating like uh, an Eskimo where they're eating like a, you know, a question Indian. You know? So this is, so, so Brian, let's scale back for a moment. When you're, when you're doing a test with someone, mm -hmm. what are the ways that you know that they're taking in the wrong things? Like, oh, I asked them like, yeah, how do you feel? Yeah. Uh, ahead, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Like I asked them how they feel, like, how's your sleep? Um, you know, and I can kind of tell, like, if they're, if they're, if they're working out and they're like, they're like, listen, I'm working out, I'm doing all this stuff. But you see, like, you know, their stomach is protruding. I ask them how they feel. Do you, do you gassy a lot? You know, what's your, what's your bowel movements like? Yeah. You know, are you going at least once a day? You know, are you doing, you know, what's, what's, what's going on? So I, I ask a lot of uh, questions based around that. And right away, I already kind of know where there are or what they should be eating. Um, based on just kind of doing, I mean, I've, I've done tens of thousands of these consultations, <laughs> you know, oh, you can, man. you can see, I see somebody walking through the door at this point and I already know what they're missing. <laughs> you know, oh, just, all right. So listen, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be vulnerable right here. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to, we're going to go through a brief test <laughs> uh -huh. on me. Uh-oh. Yeah. Are you um, ready for the world to see this? You ready? Uh, no, no, I'm actually not. That's yeah. exactly why I'm going to do this, man. All right. But um, so listen, I think this is important because, you know, Brian, I've told, I think I was telling you, um, well, to, so everybody knows, like I was at the time of this recording, I've been having some stomach issues, man. Um, mm -hmm. Gassy. Uh, I've been having regular bowel movements, which is good. But and I had a period where my bowel movements were spotty, then it got back regular. Um, mm -hmm. And I have a lot of rumbles, like especially after I eat, it's like, what are the like these like freaking like bow like these bellowing belches man so mm -hmm. um i think and as i'm telling you this i i'm understanding why this is an, uh, i'm really fascinated with this because i'm curious like i'm at a point where I'm, I'm i'm coming up to my fifth decade right so i'm looking at what are the ways i change like the stuff i'm eating like you know it's like so let's let's ask a couple questions because i don't want these cats to know too much about me yet um yeah. so, <laughs> so let's, let's let's do this one so people and also it's gonna be good so people get an idea because i think most people brian like i mean well, 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 what do you think do you think people have a good awareness like well, what, where do you think people's awareness is as far most as people like, are not in tune yeah. with their body most yeah. people are not in tune with their body yes. you know i, I mean I, I try to be in tune with my body but sometimes it's like life gets in the way we might have like 20 different things going on you know in our life and, you know, you're not paying attention of what you're putting in your body sometimes or how you're reacting to it sometimes. And right. you just kind of get in this routine and you're on autopilot. So the more stressors you have in your life, the less you're going to your body, you're going to be in tune with your body. Yeah. You know, so sometimes you need to kind of like take a step back. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Take a big picture. Look, and I, 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 that's why I'm curious as to how this works. Right. And because uh, I've, I've been in a session with you. Uh, we've actually gone through a session on um, a while back. I don't know if you remember. So I really like yeah. your style um, as far as like how you work with people. So Brian, let's take us through a, I don't know. Let, let, let's go, let's, 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 let's go through a little something, something. Matt, what questions? All right. you have? Yeah, so I could try. And yeah. Buy. So the first thing I would, I would want to figure out, like what kind of stressors do you have in your life? Um, on a scale of one that just keep it simple oh. for this one, a scale of oh. one to 10. <laughs> I was like, like you're well, about to jump off the building. I was five, and <laughs> yeah. um, I lost my pet rabbit. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're trying to keep this under an hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, like on a, yeah, so like I, on a scale of one to ten, ten being like, yeah, I'm I'm about to like you know jump off this building. One being like, man, I'm like a a Care Bear in Valium. Like, where where are you at? Oh, um. Wow. I, uh, I would say an eight, man. I would say I'm an okay. eight. Yeah. Yeah. So anything, anything higher than like probably like a five or a six, 
Yeah. And I take your age into this too, because I, I want to see where your H, H, HLC levels are at, the hydrochloric acid levels in your stomach are at. So any, as you get older, your HCL, uh, you lose a lot of, you lose percentages of it each year. What HCL does, it breaks down protein, it breaks down fat and breaks down carbohydrates in your body, predominantly protein and fat. So anytime your body's under any kind of stress, your body loses HCL and you're not, your ability to break down protein and break down fat as well as a little bit of carbohydrates, it diminishes a little bit. So right away, I would be like, all right, you need to get your HLC enzymes. You need to get some peps in your stomach so your body can break down fat protein. So you might be a protein type or like, hey, Paul, like you do very well on fats and proteins, but you, every time you're eating something, you might feel gassy or you're like bloated. And you yeah. might be thinking to yourself, oh, I, I got to stay away from meat. It makes me gassy or bloated. No, I would continue eating the meat if that's what makes you feel good. But I would add in some HCL tablets during your meals and see how you feel with that. And I guarantee you'll feel amazing right away. Because if you're not, if you don't have HCL to break down the, all these macronutrients, you're not utilizing the enzymes in the biochemical pathways that after after you break it down to be stored as energy or used as energy. So that'd be the first thing. Right away, I know your HLC issues. Chances are of your HLC issues. You probably have low levels of glutamine in your body. So I'm trying to fix your digestive tract. So 90% of your intestinal lining is L-glutamine. It's glutamine in your body. So I'd maybe put you on glutamine. That's like a prebiotic. So I would kind of start you with that. You know, those, those two. I would start with the digestion. I would start with the, instead of putting you like on funky, like multivitamins or protein shakes right. or whatever it is, you can't break it down anyways. So let's get the, let's get the stomach going. Let's get the uh, small intestines going. To get the whole digestive tract going. So right away, those two things, I'd be like glutamine and H HLC. You see this guy? You see this? Yeah. yeah wait until you get my bill, Paul. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I'll give you this. I'll give you my new address. I On its way. <laughs> Shit, man. Dude, yeah. This is interesting, man. I'm like, just off of that, like, man, it's like I told so this is a crazy thing, man. And and bless up to my GP. Uh I told him the same thing I just told you. And he told me about a probiotic. Which, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Now how you explained it to me changes everything because I I was questioning in my head, like, damn, what's what am I doing different? Like, what's wrong with me? Because mm -hmm. these these it's 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 like I'm not doing anything crazy different. I mean, like, so I cut out coffee, cut out processed sugars, which has helped mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. still doing this. So you saying that I'm like, oh shit, like so my anyway. Mm -hmm. So this is I just want to like this is the importance of even becoming aware. And, and speaking about this. So like in this case, like what would be like another question you would ask me? We'll do like one or two more and then we'll, we'll move on. Yeah, I, I'd want to basically get like a, like I'd ask you basically, what'd you eat yesterday? And that gives me, because people eat the same foods over and over again. So I'm trying to get an idea of like a, like a one or a two day food log of what you're eating. What time you're waking up, what are you eating first thing in the morning? Uh, how far you're spacing out your meals? I just want to get an idea of what it's a day in like of Paul eating gotcha. you know are you eating while you're on the run are you in your car just throwing down food really quick where your body's stressing and right away i know you're not digesting it right because you're, you're 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 in a stressful situation are you watching like the you're watching the news at night while you're eating it you know like what, what how 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 is how's your relationship with food that's what that's another thing i'd be asking interesting okay. so, so most sounds, people like yeah go ahead man. Well, what I'm hearing is, is you're asking about the environment still. Like, first of sure. all, what environment am I in um, as far as my stress level? Yeah, And also, like, what's the environment that I'm in while I'm eating my food? <laughs> because yeah. it sounds like that has an impact on how I'm processing food and the types of food, but what, maybe the types of foods I eat, or is it more at this point about realigning that person and figuring, like, getting their systems to work properly sure yeah like if like you know extreme example and we all heard this before a tiger jumps out at you you're not it's not a good time to sit down and eat food 
you know, all that blood is in your muscles, on your digestive system. So if you're watching the, you're watching the news and you're seeing the stock market crash or whatever, whatever's going on in the world now, yeah, your your cortisol is gonna be high. You're in the fight or flight. All that mu- all that blood is in your muscles. Then while you're eating the food, you'd be like, oh man, I'm just like I'm not digesting well, feeling gassy, I don't burp, I'm burping all over the place, whatever, whatever, the, whatever the case may be. But maybe it's not the food. Maybe it's your environment. Try eating with like, you know, just at a table by yourself and just peace and quiet. See how you feel after that. Right. You know, so it's not just like we have this thing as a society where everything is like, you know, broken down to little pieces. Right. But it's 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 a big homeostasis, <laughs> you know, or not homeostasis. It's a big, um, I forgot the word I'm trying to look for, Petri where everything dish. is a Petri dish and conglomeration of everything together. A holistic mm-hmm. approach of everything together so it's it, i mean you studies have proved this you know, you you watch a you watch a, a violent movie while you're eating food and you watch something that's like a comedy eating food your body will handle the nutrients differently mm-hmm. you know? so you, know, you got to go back to your environment a little bit. and then again this this is on a holistic approach of it you know so this is so wild because i, I was just talking about this the other day um, I was, I'm doing my best to recall. Either way, it doesn't matter who it was. But we were talking about, oh, oh, yeah, my client, because he was like, sometimes I can't eat. I was like, well, when are you eating? You know, mm-hmm. like, is it when you're at, when, when are you eating at work? Because he, he, he said, well, yeah, I really don't eat at work. And I'm like, well, what prevents you from eating? He's like, well, I just got a lot of stuff going on. I'm like, shit, well, at this point, you're probably better off not even eating. Because if you're eating and it's just, yeah. Then like, why bother, man? Like, shit, yeah, your body's gonna be like, no, yeah, stay back up off me, man. Um, yeah, or if he's gonna eat, out, if he's going to eat, I would, I would, uh, you know, eat smaller meals. You know, just drinks a lot of water before, so that'll create a little more HCL in your body, so your yeah. body can break it down a little better. You know. But I mean, there's always time to eat. Like, listen, people are like, oh, I work eight hours a day. Like, dude, you take a break. <laughs> like, no one works eight hours straight. Like, you know. And this is and this is what I like about this topic about the and why I really appreciate I'm getting the book, by the way. Um, because mm-hmm. I really I want to have this in my library because I think this is like this is all synchronous as far as where I am personally. Yes, I'm being selfish right here. Um, I know this is for everybody else, but I'm being selfish for myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm still focused on me. Um, I think this is right on time because one of the things when I was looking up the metabolic typing diet is that I found like this is about like having a personalized approach to what I'm taking into my body. And I appreciate yeah. this. Like even though, even though it was like two or three questions, I appreciate what you're asking me because it's having me really look at or really look at really evaluate like, well, what, what's the space that I'm I'm really eating in, right? Like, um, and it's wild because recently when I have lunch at work, I go to a park. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah. instead of sitting on my desk and and watching the reading the New York Post, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's a difference, man. It's a it's a huge yeah. difference. Uh, when when we're talking about a, a personalized diet, especially when you talked uh, you talked to um, last time you get uh, in the first part of this, you gave an example of of how you would eat versus how uh, another person that we know would eat. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And how if 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 a person takes in something that they're that's meant for someone else, it's it, or it, it's going to make them worse. It's going to make them sick. Sure. So uh question I'm thinking uh, uh, it's been on my mind is like in that kind of situation or circumstance. Right. Um, especially with stress. This can stress make everything that we that even things that are meant for us make us sick, man. Sure, you're not digesting your food, remember? So it's kind of like the the example I gave you before. If you're totally stressed out, you have long term cortisol in you. Your body's always in the fight or flight. There's right. no blood, very little blood in your in your organs. It all goes into your muscles because it's trying to get away. So it's gonna be very hard for you to break down food, you know. So you need to you need to control these stressors in your life absolutely you know uh, yeah man uh man this is this is interesting because like as you're talking about this another thing that came up when i was looking up the meta this this type of diet is Mm -hmm. that this is a long-term approach 
So yeah. it's, it's free of being, uh, hey, I'm going to do this for six months. Nah, man. This yeah. is like, what are we really and doing? Paul, what do we, what do we talk about in the first episode? Your health is a three-legged stool. It's nutrition, it's it's physical, and it's mental, emotional, spiritual. You know, if I had the problem with the problem with this, with this paradigm is if I tell you, hey, listen, you're eating good foods, like you're eating high quality foods right. or they, like, give me, write me up a diet and they're very stressed out. And I go, hey, listen, this diet will help a little bit, but you need to worry about, you need to start fixing the stressors that are kind of in your life. Mm. What do most people say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just, just give me a diet. I'll worry about the stress later. You know, I'll worry about the extra, extra money I need to make later. Or I need to, uh, you know, settle an argument with my significant other later. You know, mm -hmm. they, they push that aside. To the, they push that to the side. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't take responsibility for their, for their stressors in their life. You know, it's not just mental, emotional stressors, right? Maybe we have six different stressors mm -hmm. in our body, right? You know, so it could be any one of those you know, chemical, environmental, it could be, you know, uh, nutritional, which is the biggest one, psyche, thermal, it could be any, any one of those, you know, you can always be in back pain. That's a stress, you know? So maybe, maybe you've been wobbling around with like your, maybe like you're talking about you with your hip, maybe you have hip pain forever for the last year or two, but you never want to fix that. It's gonna be very hard for you to digest food, walking around in pain all the time. So it might not be your diet, so to speak, you know? This is, mm. So this is so people. This is very important. So um, in the show notes, uh, Brian's going to provide a quiz, or there's, there's going to be a quiz yeah. for you to go through. And also, I'm going to share an article that I found to be very helpful when I was looking up the about the metabolic typing diet. When, and it basically goes into the type, like the protein types, the carbohydrate types, the mixed types. It also talks to, to some of the pros and the cons, right? Because like, listen. This is the benefit of looking at this from a long-term perspective. There's pros and there's cons to everything. The key thing is yeah. to tap into what's relevant for you, what feels right. So, um, right. So I was curious, man, especially like when you are speaking before, we were talking about how, like, especially doing part two, right? There's like, what is it going to take to integrate these types of messages, these types of lessons? So for someone that's that may that may be completely disconnected from like how they're taking care of themselves, would you mm -hmm. like what are your suggestions as far as them like creating this type of environment for them to be able to take a high level perspective on like what they're putting in their body, their stress levels, all that type of stuff, man? Yes. The first thing I would do is uh, learn your metabolic type. I'll put it, there's a, there's going to be a link to the questionnaire in, in the description. Uh, it's pretty in-depth, like 60, 60 something questions. Damn, and son. then there's no I know. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, yeah. So there's about 60 something questions in there. That's the true one. There's other, there's other metabolic typings out there, quizzes that are like 10 or 12, mm -hmm. but I've seen people be totally different on that. Mm -hmm. So do the extra uh, 15 minutes of, uh, uh, no taking and not really no taking, just answering the questions, no, and then I'll give you a much more precise uh, result. Yeah. Um, do that. Find out what what type you are. You're a protein. You're a carbohydrate. Maybe you're a mixed type. And then from there, what I would do is um, in incorporate that. Start 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 looking at it. What is it? I'll tell you the proportions. Maybe like if you're a carb type, maybe like you know sixty percent of your plate should be like carbohydrates you know, 30 for this for protein and maybe like 10% fat, you know, and start incorporating that in there. Um, and then, yeah, so that, that's the first, that's the first place I would go. Okay. Take, take the uh, test. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to take the test. I'm going to take that test. Um, mm -hmm. I had a question for you and it escaped my mind. Uh, so, so yeah. So first thing, know your type. And oh, uh, you were mentioning about um, oh, that's what I wanted to say. Like, I, I just noticed when I had this reaction to like when you said sixty four questions. Yeah. And this is uh, my my first reaction was like, God, that's a long that's a long thing. And then I recognized like I'm coming out of the mindset of like, um, quick and fast. And yeah, yeah. You know the the I mean? microwave mindset, right? You want everything heated up uh, quick. 
it's <laughs> like how we do one thing is how we do everything. Yeah. How yeah. we do everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's wild, man, because like, you know, and I think that's a mentality, right? It's like, oh my God, is there a short one? And listen, yeah. this is a mentality we get to address because. If we really want something long term, like, you know, my goal is to live to 108 and still be able to, to have all my, what is it, capacities and, you know, pool yeah. on and this stuff and like, you know, still, still like to get some buns. So like to be able, for me to be able to do that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, hey, I got, hey, Robert yeah. De Niro and, and they, they, they can do it, man. I can do it too, son. I have yeah. to understand, <laughs> but you know, that's the size of me. And once you once you get your metabolic type, another yeah. important thing is you have a journal. All right. So, like I mentioned in the first one, I want to know your short. You, you should be writing down your short term responses, how you feel after eating each meal. Yep. You know, if you're wired but tired, jittery, ADD, uh, you're not satisfied. I mean, now you can eat like an hour later. Way too yeah. many carbohydrates for that meal. You feel lethargic, you're moody, depressed. Too much fat and protein for that meal. And write it right next to it. You know, hey, I had a steak. You know, eight ounce steak with a with a baked potato and whatever, like in a whatever it was. I felt yeah. like crap afterwards. Like you should be going every three to four hours, being like, dude, I feel amazing. Like I'm yeah. I'm ready to run a marathon. If that's not the case, something is off in there. So you're gonna have the journal a little bit in the beginning. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. That was other piece. I'm glad you brought that up because that was the other piece I wanted to go over. The first piece was the take take your time and especially in regards to your health. The second piece is record what's going on, especially in regards to your health. Um, so, you know, we I heard you say before, like, you know, take but do the toilets and take notes. And then you're like, no, don't take notes. And I'm like, no, take notes. Like Brian's telling you right now, like, you know, take notes as far as like how you how you feel. And also in this phase of it, like, you know, write down, record some notes like, man, I'm, I don't like this question. Or like, man, I realized that this is happening. The thing is, people, you know, especially with, with the content that Brian and I are going to be sharing with you cats, because, you know, you can already, I, 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 I value what Brian brings in his intellect and his now and his how he analyzes things. So a lot of the things that we're going to talk to write this stuff down, take notes, start recording the topics that we talk about, record what you're what you experienced when we were talking about it. What were some of the questions, yeah. maybe images, beliefs that came up? Because listen, mm -hmm. what we're doing here is like, it's more than talking about like, this is a carb and blah. While that is important, it's also about what does that shit mean to you, right? Like, what does it mean to you, man? How does it impact you? Is it the best thing for you? Because this is what we're, we're here to help others, man. And help you, yeah. and specifically help you be your best freaking self. Yes. Oh. And also what, what you figure out your metabolic type, just say you're a carbohydrate type. Yeah. Not all carbs are the same. Not everyone does well in the same. Some might do better on blueberries. Some might better do better on, you know, flaxseed or um, um, whatever it is, like potatoes or whatever. So once you figure out your metabolic type, just say you're a full-blown carb type, there's certain foods that you should work with and certain foods you stay away with. So what I want you guys to do is once you fill out the questionnaire form, Comment in the section below or uh, send us an email through the, our YouTube channel and we'll send you be like, Hey, I'm a mixed type. Send me the, send me the, send me the foods that are work best for me. I'm a carb type. Send me the foods that work best for you. And Paul and I will send you it over uh, ASAP. Yep. Yeah. But I want to make yes. sure you guys are filling out the questionnaire first and you're journaling. And then after that, we can kind of go with the, the proper foods. Yep. See, slow and steady. Yep. Yeah, little pieces. Little pieces, man, up the ladder. So this was great, but Brian, thank you, thank you, thank you. Brian, any, uh, you, you dropped a lot of gems up in this piece today. Uh, any last words for the people before we wrap up? It's going to be a process up in front, up front. You know, you, you I always say this, man, like uh, you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to create responsibility for yourself, for your, for your health. No one else is going to do it. Don't, don't rely on... Even Paul and I don't rely on doctors, don't rely on anybody. It's your responsibility. So take about an hour, do the questionnaire, think thoroughly through it, start incorporating, get a food journal, and, and go. Just just go little by little. And I 100 percent guarantee you will feel slowly start to feel better. Slowly start to feel better. Boom. And reach out to us. Reach out to us. 
Dude, man, yes. Like what he said. <laughs> so bless up, everybody. Listen again. Tap into the show notes, uh, leave comments. As Brian said, do the metabolic testing. Tap into us, let us know the type. We'll send you over the responses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're so grateful for you, for your attention, for your time. That's a precious commodity, um, just like you. And uh, we're out, man. Thank you. Peace.